country start? I'm Patrick Bond. I teach at the University of KwaZulu-Natal, Durban, South Africa, in the Department of Development Studies. I direct the Center for Civil Society. It's a good chance today with the COP17, the UN C, the Climate Summit, to think about puppet statehood, uh, the context of energy apartheid, the climate crisis. The situation in South Africa is dire, but many countries would qualify as puppet states if we consider big power, imperialist uh, interests, and big corporations, especially in the fossil fuel industry. And we see that here in the center of the world, Durban, uh, where at this location, uh, delegations are meeting, and they're meant to be doing something about the climate uh, crisis. They really won't, by all accounts. There's no deal on the table that would cut the emissions. We know this kind of problem here, because uh, nine years ago, the World Summit on Sustainable Development was in Johannesburg, and you can see lots of protesters, 30,000 here, against the Blues, South African police, defending the United Nations, heads of state, the multilaterals, big business, who are promoting type two partnerships, the privatization of water, the privatization of the air, that is carbon trading. And there were a lot of ang angry people because it was understood that big business had successfully infiltrated the UN with its ideas of sustainable development, namely more opportunities for profit and greenwashing. Uh, and as for the issue of climate change, as our great cartoonist Sapiro shows, there wasn't really anything worth speaking of, uh, the uh, protesters notwithstanding. And a big uh, cause, of course, is uh, Washington. And so the, the core of a world political economy remains the petro-military uh, industrial complex of Washington, overlaid with financial and commercial circuits of neoliberalism, giving us a major problem, for example, witnessed in 2009, two years ago, the last major COP where we thought there was some potential for progress. We had uh, South African President Jacob Zuma, the then President of Brazil, Lula, Barack Obama, Wen Jibao, Manmohan Singh, and as uh, Bill McKibben put it, they broke the United Nations, working as uh, the, the master with the sub-imperial powers, a decision to adopt non-binding agreements that would lead the world to a four-degree uh, increase this uh, century, a total uh, ecological disaster and social disaster. So a sense that the Copenhagen summit, uh, like uh, its successor in Cancun a year ago, uh, meant really just to revive carbon markets and the appearance of uh, a new process uh, legitimizing the UN FCCC's adoption of the Copenhagen Accord. And of course in uh, Durban we know from 10 years uh, and a bit ago that this puppet statehood characteristic very much applies when we have these major UN conferences in this city. We saw George W. Bush and Kofi Annan in a relationship that left the issue of Israeli Zionism, the occupation of Palestine, the West Bank and Gaza, and also the uh, uh, question of reparations for apartheid and colonialism and slavery off uh, the substantive agenda there. It's getting worse because the arrogance of Washington is extreme. Here they're asked about the climate debt, and the top negotiator from the State Department said, look, that sense of guilt or culpability or reparations, I just categorically reject that. Something that just a couple of days ago, his assistant Jonathan Pershing amplified in saying, we're not going to sign a deal unless it's our deal, and we're not going to approve the, the, the Green Climate Fund. Um, Todd Stern was revealed, thanks to WikiLeaks, Julian Assange and Bradley Manning, uh, assisting us to learn how the bullying and bribery in these negotiations work with Mela Zanawi, very much a puppet, whether it's in the Somali invasion 2007, but particularly in dealing with the climate, the 2009 demands for climate debt cut in half, or more poignantly, even the uh, Maldives, where the cabinet actually had their scuba suits on underwater to dramatize the sinking island, but it turned out just a few uh, weeks later, in February 2010, it was only $50 million that permitted Todd Stern's gang to turn around the Maldives in a bribe for, for uh, making them now support the Copenhagen Accord. So this is the kind of bullying, blackmailing, bribery that we see here. Protests here in, in uh, Durban notwithstanding, we anticipate the US to be just as sabotage oriented. And that means that when the South African foreign minister, whose name is Maite Nkwanamashabani, deals with Hillary Clinton, it's a puppet relationship. We've seen that um, puppet relationship in diverse ways. Some may find it curious that the, that the chair of the presidency of the UN uh, at Triple C, COP17, goes to someone who just refused to put her handbag through the Norway um, uh, the X-ray machine, so she took a private jet, quite a notorious incident a few weeks ago. And then 
uh, just uh, again weeks ago in October, denied, basically refused to give on time a visa to the Dalai Lama who simply wanted to visit uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu uh, for his 80th birthday. So this is also a sense of being a puppet very much to, to Beijing. Well, is South Africa a puppet to big business interests and how do we understand that? It's quite important to understand the Madupi and Kusile coal-fired power plants under construction here in South Africa. Vast coal-fired power plants, the third and fourth largest in the world. A major dirty energy, dirty oil refinery underway. And an insistence that provincial and municipal mitigation come first, even though it's really a national responsibility. Here in Durban, a puppet statehood uh, uh, as a municipality for sure, this is because for big business, we've seen extreme greenwashing to pretend there's a low carbon city, when actually in reality we've seen the widening of the port, already Africa's largest harbor, and a new dugout harbor where the old airport was, a few kilometers south of the, the older one, King Shaka Airport, a brand new international airport, totally unnecessary by all accounts, new long distance routes and a reliance on sports tourism for economic development. Uh, an attempt to hold a, a 2024 Olympics with this white elephant stadium, uh, and then the petrochemical complex expanding by leaps and bounds in the most haphazard way with many fires and explosions, uh, with a, a large cost increase and a doubling of the oil uh, pipeline capacity to Johannesburg. If we come now to how that feels on the ground, for most people getting the electricity bills from the coal-fired power plants, Madupe Kasile, under construction, resulting, as the Bureau shows, in ESCOM more than doubling the price of electricity. They have been bragging, this is the 2009 annual report, of the cheapest electricity in the world, about five cents. And they mainly are talking about electricity to these big smelters. They even get it at about two US cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, for ordinary South Africans, it's up above 12, 13 cents. And that's why the protests are occurring. Partly because of the kind of crony capitalism that sees the elites of the state, even the new South African government, circulating round and round through big business. BHP Billiton getting that 40-year deal at the end of apartheid, and it was maintained with special pricing agreements, notwithstanding social protest against uh, the deals, including a deal by the World Bank. This was a, a bank loan of $3.75 billion in April last year, the largest project loan of the bank ever, and that was a loan that would um, allegedly help poor people get electricity, but as I've shown, the, the price has gone up through the roof and people are very angry, very very much uh, protesting in the streets about this large loan, partly because our emissions are already 20 times worse than the United States if you take the measurement per person, per unit of, uh, of output, the, the uh, GDP, um, the intensity of the economy, uh, and its reliance, uh, the intensity of the fossil fuel component of the per capita economy. And um, that's just worsening and worsening with the new coal-fired power plants, Madupi uh, and Kasile, with the large increases, the increased disconnections of poor people, ubiquitous service delivery protests. Uh, so we've seen a great many of the protests. We have probably more protests per person in South Africa than anywhere in the world, maybe China accepted. Uh, and these continue as electricity prices increase. So when you have puppetry, you also have resistance, a kind of Polanyi story of, of a double movement. Well, we've seen concrete suggestions for green climate jobs in areas like the solar hot water heaters that we should be seeing all over the country, but we've only seen a tiny fraction because the job was given to ESCOM, whose interests are not to roll these out. And same with solar, with uh, large-scale solar, with wind and with uh, tidal, plenty of opportunities to move these metal workers out of their steel, their smelting, their auto industry jobs, and into public transport, into uh, the, the renewable sector where they could be making a great many things. And then finally, a, a story or two from where I live. South Durban is a very high profile because of uh, the South Durban Community Environmental Alliance activist uh, network. But just uh, over a month ago, uh, or, or uh, six weeks ago, the uh, school called Settlers Primary uh, witnessed this. I mean, a hundred uh, kids were hospitalized as uh, boiling oil hit their skin. And as they went uh, to school and were playing and, and had to be hospitalized uh, because of this fire at the engine refinery right next to the school. And this is the kind of condition of environmental racism that the black uh, Indian, the colored uh, African students face 
uh, with a 52% asthma rate at that school, the worst in, in the world, in fact. So this is the South Durban context for the biggest petrochemical complex in Africa, the armpit, really, of, of the continent, with the three major oil refineries, uh, with a, a big Toyota car assembly plant, with a paper mill, with uh, the, the big petrochemical plants, with the, the biggest port and all the new port uh, construction and as well container terminals, uh, new uh, construction expected. So a major push to make Durban a high carbon municipality. This is all being uh, sort of ignored or, or brushed over with the greenwashing in the city at the moment. So it's important for us to acknowledge that Durban is one of the most uh, serious causes as well as victims. We, we had a storm a couple of nights ago where 14 people were killed uh, because the housing and the stormwater drainage were not able to handle the crisis. But it's mainly in this sort of energy apartheid and the failure to deal with the climate crisis properly that we see residential areas and huge refineries next to each other in Durban and all over the third world. So these explosions occurring uh, regularly um, and a community group fighting back but not yet winning their demand not just to close the refinery so it's not in my backyard but that it's not in the planet's backyard to keep the oil in the soil, leave the coal in the hole. Even fracking becomes a threat here because Shell has persuaded uh, South African government to start exploratory drilling. Protests ensued, an 18-month moratorium was put on the area called the Karoo. But it is an important area here from Durban all the way up to Johannesburg where particularly Secunda represents the largest CO2 emission site in the world. Uh, because that's where Sassel, the company on the New York Stock Exchange, formerly South African, has um, gone from coal to oil and gas to oil. A couple more points. They're also looking for oil offshore here in Durban. First chosen a company deeply involved with the junta in Myanmar and Burma. And a, a big protest against that ensuing because of the sense that, again, South Africa connects closer to China than to the Burmese Democrats and therefore protects Burma and the UN Security Council. Well, amongst the resistance has been intellectual work. The uh, Durban Group of Climate Justice, Larry Lohman's edited collection uh, for the Dark Commercial Foundation, Carbon Trading in 2004, and then plenty of other protests and activism against the carbon trading strategy, against fossil fuel um, uh, disasters, as we've seen in South Durban, as well as against electricity disconnections, with some very important activists maintaining international solidarity here in Durban, and a, and a CJ network that's now hosting an alternative people space here at the University of KwaZulu Natal, not too far from the International Convention Center. And it's here I think where I'll end because this is the relationship that we learned during apartheid, the relationship of uh, the world imperial forces to a state, uh, South Africa, in which the elites played a sort of Bantustan role in the global apartheid system. We have global climate apartheid, and unfortunately, until those social movements rise up even faster and with more fury from the base, we're going to continue to see puppet statehood, energy apartheid, and the continuing climate crisis. Thank you very much.